Let's set the record straight here. This topic has been floating around for nearly a decade, and I've yet to see any concrete evidence on whether or not this works. Let's debunk or confirm the myth this week in this episode. No, the title screen is not taking hallucinogenic drugs, and I am absolutely covering this topic. It piqued my curiosity as I wanted to upgrade to macOS Sierra for long-term OS and app support. I also became curious when the physical hardware has been addressed differently since booting macOS Yosemite, the most notable example being 64GB being addressed under macOS Yosemite, however, not in any prior operating system. That, and I have a modified boot.efi file, which may or may not be attributed to that. So let's jump right in. All right, so in here we have a 5470 and inside the Mac Pro down there we have dual 5355s. So, let's get started. On my first attempt, I simply disassembled the computer and replaced both the 5355 Xeons with the 5470. This resulted in the machine powering on, revving up the fans, however not achieving the boot chime. So I shut it off. On my second attempt, I was more curious about the boot process. I swapped a 5355 onto the bottom socket and a 5470 onto the top and had a red LED error for CPU A. The machine did not boot and ended up having the same behavior problems as in my first attempt, where the machine would start up, rev up the fans, and would not get to the boot chime, so I shut it down. On my third attempt, I decided to duke it out and see what would happen if I were to force flash a third generation Mac Pro EFI onto the Mac Pro. I found a terminal command which allowed me to bless and mount the EFI as an update. I took the 3.1 Mac Pro EFI from the official EFI updater on Apple's website for the 2008 Mac Pro. El Capitan, however, which was installed on my Mac Pro 1.1, required rootless to be disabled to achieve this, so that's what stopped me. My next attempt was my solution to rootless, since I did not have a recovery partition. Alright guys, so this is my fourth attempt right here. Right now I am working with the terminal command that I showed in the previous attempt. And what I'm going to do is open this. And I'm going to copy sudo blast dash mount space uh, bracket space dash firmware. I'm going to paste that into here, hit space, and I'm going to drop in the third generation Mac Pro firmware. My fourth and final attempt, which did not include a variation of any other attempt, ended up in failure as well. This was not the first time I attempted applying the firmware as I have previously attempted. Between attempts, I also replaced the CPU, only to find the system profiler reflecting the original firmware. So no, even if I wanted to screw up my logic board entirely, and even if it were possible, it is physically impossible to manually flash the firmware, even though the system claims to have taken it with the boot chime. So, what is it we've learned here today? Clearly, according to my attempts, the 54 series Xeon will not work in a first generation or second generation Mac Pro. Would I say that this video is wasted energy? Absolutely not. We now have definitive video evidence that there is no method available to upgrade past the Xeon 5365 for the first and second generations Mac Pro. Now, in order to get macOS Sierra, you must own a machine that supports SSE 4.1 or is capable of being upgraded to a CPU that supports SSE 4.1. There is a chance, however, that somewhere deep in the abysses of Apple headquarters, someone might be able to change this. The fact that I was even able to guide the Mac Pro through such a firmware upgrade and the fact that it even chimed just shocks me. Thank you so very much for watching this video. If you like it, like it, dislike it, you know what to do. Leave a comment for suggestions on more guides you would like to see and subscribe to see more cool tech stuff. And I will hopefully see you guys in the next video. Super Ice Cream Sandwich over and out.